Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Samsung Developer Conference 2017. Brought to you by Samsung. Okay, welcome back everyone. Here live in San Francisco at Moscone West is theCUBE's exclusive coverage of Samsung Developer Conference, hashtag SDC 2017. I'm John Furrier, the co-founder of SiliconANGLE Media, co-host of theCUBE. My next guest is artist, director, and producer Rob Pryor at robpryor.com. Great to have you, thanks for spending the time. It's good to be here. All right, it's great to, to have here. you. You're super impressive. I'm, uh, was amazed by the work behind me on the wide shot. We go to the wide shot, you can see the artwork you've done. You were just here behind us on the main Disruptor Studio with yep. Stan Lee, who was Marvel Comics, legend in the industry. Legend. I mean, just absolute legend. And he's here promoting you know, the edge of the network with Samsung games, all that good stuff, part of the developer conference. Yeah. Uh, but you were up there painting with both hands in real time, uh, and did this art. Yeah, it was uh, less than an hour, I think this one was. I don't know, I don't even keep track anymore, I'm just like. <laughs> so you do both hands, so how did that come about? How did you get to the two hands? Um, when I was about, all right, I was going to be an artist no matter what, my entire family line were artists, but none by profession. So I was kind of not even given a choice. So I got to be about 10 years old and I thought the, the same thing that every 10 year old thinks, what if I lose my right hand? No 10 year old thinks that. So <laughs> I, um, I switched at 10, I, I switched to, you know, I was born a righty, I switched to be a lefty, I switched everything, I switched, you know, baseball, how I threw balls, playing guitar, I switched everything over. So for two years, no matter how much people begged me to, like, my grades were going, like, down, because no one could read my writing, because I'm like... <laughs> it's like cryptic. Yeah, it was, it was weird. And, um, and so, at that point, I made my, my left hand as good as my right hand, and uh, I was published very young, and uh, I was published at 13, internationally published at 15. And 13, when I got published, I had math homework due and I had a painting, a cover due. And I'm like, oh my God, how did I do it? Yeah, screw the homework, how about yeah. I do the painting? So I, I picked up two brushes and I was like, oh, I could do this. And then I actually found out that I could do my math homework and paint simultaneously. Um, I, could, I shut my eyes, apparently, when I, I don't know when I do it, but when I paint, my eyes are shut a lot of the time. Wow. That's awesome, so that's so great skill, so you get it done faster, but it's also creative. Talk about the, uh, the, your work, I mean obviously your, your artistry, cartoons, you started doing, what did you get into first, and how did, it, how did your career evolve, and take us through the evolution of your career, because now in the tech scene, you're doing some awesome art, but you know, we're living in a digital world. Yeah, well, yeah. There's the, how's that? You doing cartoons, doing covers? Well, I did when I when I first when I first started out. I would I was doing interiors, like just pen and ink interiors, and then I started moving into color painted covers, and um, you know, sort of gradually went from you know black and white work to full color work to you know being you know doing a lot of different magazine covers, uh, book covers, like you name it. I, I Worked heavily with TSR, which is Dungeons and Dragons at the time, <laughs> um, and I just sort of moved forward and kept. And then you got to Hollywood. Did you start with what movies? What movies did you work on? Oh my God, I've worked on a lot of low-budget movies. I worked on uh, uh, TV series like uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Firefly, uh, Angel. Um, God, so so many. I mean, like literally yeah. the that whole era of of TV shows, um, you know, movie-wise, I, I, you know, I've done stuff with Fast and the Furious. Um, wow, it's amazing when, when you get asked, when you have a, a giant body of work, <laughs> when you ask that question, all I see are ducks going <laughs> across. Um, well, you just came off stage, so you're really in, in painting mode now. You just did this painting, and how long yeah. did it take you to do this one? I'm sorry? This art, how, how long did it take you to this do was, this one? This was a little under an hour. Um, I painted one earlier as well on the main stage during the keynote speech. Okay. Um, and that one took me, I don't know, 45 minutes or yeah. something like that. So they're giving their talk and you're painting away. Yep. And you've yeah. done this at concerts. Tell, what other yeah. venues have you done? Um, things like this, I've done it with concerts. So, you know, people like Tech 9 Linkin Park, uh, you know, Steve Aoki, Flo Rida. Um, just to name a few. Um, so I, I do it while they're performing, so I'll do a, a full like four foot by eight foot painting in about an hour and a half. Um, and when I, but when I'm doing gallery work, it takes me about a day, maximum two days of painting. Yeah. 
Well, you're a considerable talent. You mentioned before we came on camera, you're going to do the Lincoln Park Memorial, the Hollywood Bowl. I am. I'm going to be painting there uh, on the 27th at the Hollywood Bowl. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of people there. Just, you know, I think I think they said that the tickets sold out in like 39 seconds or something. It was crazy. Yeah. Um, but I'm fortunate enough to be able to do that and, yeah. you know, pay my respects as well. Yeah. So. Well, great, great work you're doing. I'm really inspired by that because one of the things we're passionate about at Silicon Angle and theCUBE here is the social science, arts and technology coming together. That's clearly a trend that's happening. You're starting to see the younger generation too coming into this world. And certainly, you know, you have four kids, I have four kids too. We were talking about that earlier, but they're getting immersed in this digital culture and might miss out on some of the analog art. And Absolutely. What's your thoughts on that? Because this is like, you do both, right? So yes. you, you get your hands dirty. I see your hands are dirty, good yep, job. They're you really roll up your sleeves, little pun intended. So and this is the key to success. Share your thoughts and vision for the younger generation and other artists out there because art will be the front and center piece of technology. Inspiration, user interface, gaming, augmented reality. No, absolutely. I, you know, here's the thing, and, and this is something that you and I were talking about just a little bit ago. I think that we as humans have a choice. You know, especially kids nowadays, they can go and they can be fully immersed, but then they miss all the other things, you know, I, I've seen kids at tables texting each other instead of talking. But I think, I think if you take the analog era, the, the thing, like the live painting, because I use, I'll, I'll take a picture of this, I'll port it into the computer, I'll clean it up and I'll, I'll do that. I think mixing the two worlds is, is vital, you know, in, in advancing forward as, as humans. I mean, that's just my opinion. I try and teach my kids that as well. Yeah. Um, you can't forget about the real world, because yeah. the real world is going to be here no matter what. Yeah. So, you know, I and think- And then game developers are out there right now working on a lot of ideas, inspiration, you've, driven, you've drawn monsters before. Uh, some Absolutely. Some characters here from Marvel with Stan Lee. Um, there is a, they need a creative spark. Oh, absolutely, and look, there are, uh, creative spark, anything can be a tool, you know? So, the computer, doing computer art is, an amazing opportunity to explore a new kind of tool, right? To invent and create new creatures or new things. It's, it's all on how you use it. And then you get the, the people, and I, I, I said this on stage the other, the other week, you get people who are taking photos and then pressing you know, 27 filters and calling, it, and calling it art. I think you have to go backwards and once again, be able to do the analog, write your story, create your idea, and take any tool that's available and make it happen. Whether it's to picking up a paintbrush, whether it's getting on a computer and a Wacom tablet. Yeah. So you think best practice from a, from a young artist standpoint is get down and dirty, get analog. Absolutely. And that's your uh, inspiration sandbox, if you will. Absolutely, you know, I, I, and I think, here's an example. It's hard to have a gallery show of all digital stuff because then it's just prints of things that you've, you've done, there's no, there, there's no brush strokes, there's nothing there. And a lot of art collectors want to see the stroke. They want to know it's a one of a kind, that's yeah. it. Yeah, the prototype. Yeah. Or whatever the inspiration was, it's inspiring. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, so I tell, I tell all artists, and even at the best computer artists, I'm like, get, go analog, get, you know, yeah. get your hands ready, paint, and, and yeah. let that speak as well. I've been lucky uh, at my age to see a bunch of waves of innovation and technology, it's super exciting. Um, I'd love to get your thoughts from your perspective uh, in the artistry community, and you've been in LA over the past 10 years, maybe even 20, let's say 10 is easier number. You know, 10 years ago, the iPhone wasn't even out, right? Oh so actually 10, year, actually 10 years ago was the iPhone, but let's say 11 years ago, there was no iPhone. There was, YouTube just hit the scene, so this whole digital culture has just shifted. Oh, right? absolutely. Apple was a no-name company in 2000, right? One, you know, Michael Dell once said, you know, they should give the stock back to stockholders. Right? <laughs> so, so, you know, Steve Jobs proved them all wrong. What is the scene like in your world around the past 10 years? What's been the disruptive change? Where's the enablement? What's been bad? What's been good? What's your thoughts? You know, in the art world itself, something I just mentioned, um, the, what's, what's disrupted um, the art world is people coming in and literally just being what I call a button pusher artist. You know, they, they figure out a filter or 10 or whatever, they make art on their phone and they're like, and that disrupts a lot of things because then it, it shows or can teach kids or, or artists, anybody, our people our age, whatever, it doesn't matter. 
um, that it's okay to do that and skip all of the steps. And I think that's the biggest point is uh, the technology has allowed people to think they can skip steps, but you can't. You can never skip the steps. What's some of the consequences of, the, of those steps skipping? What's, um, the, what's the consequence of there? So, uh, 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 like, if that's what you are, if you if you figured out filters and you get hired to do a job because maybe you're the greatest filter button butcher. butcher in the <laughs> world, but then all of a sudden your computer goes out. What do you do? Call Apple Care. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know, it, genius I, bar appointment. I, I know. You're I know. Screwed, somebody, basically. You you are. I mean, I knew way back way back in the twenty years ago. If you were versed in drawing cars and you got a job doing storyboards for a commercial, and all of a sudden the, they said, hey, we're changing everything, now we're taking out all the cars and now it's going to be real people. If you're not good at drawing real people, you lost your job. Same basic concept, yeah. you, have to, you have to take it all in, you know, in a giant ball. And for the people who are like, I don't want to touch a computer, Man, that's so it works both ways. It absolutely so what, so works what, both ways. So you're saying, if I get this right, is that the computer is a great enabler and accelerant of a finished product. Absolutely. So you use it. You take this print we behind us. You'll touch it up and you'll turn it into posters. You'll sell it. You'll syndicate it. Yep. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. But you did the work here in an hour <laughs> with both hands. You know. And ah. you did it just on the fly. Total creative creativity. Yeah. I, I mean, it, today's world. I think if we let it, if we let things go too much, then 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 the computer takes over and we lose a part of ourselves. Right, what about your social friends, uh, like musicians? You know. I oh know my God. So what's the musician vibe? Same thing. I mean, tools are out there now. My well, son's doing some stuff on Ableton Live. He loves that software suite, but he's still laying some guitar licks down. Absolutely. And you know, the great thing about in the music scene, you know, I, I heard this a lot when Pro Tools first came out. Everybody was like, "That's the death of the producer." No, that was the beginning of a different kind of producer. And if you can do things at home and you're good, then you, then it's great. What's the culture like in LA right now in terms of the creative producer, creator? Because you got like a maker culture on the geek side, robotics, maker culture, put stuff together, build some new things. Now you got a creator culture which builds off the maker culture, then you got the builder culture all kind of coming together. Uh, what's the success formula in your mind, uh, you know, besides the managing the tools, what's the mindset of the new producer, the new director, the new artist? What's, you know, what do you see as success points? These are some of the best questions I've ever been asked. Like literally in every interview, I'm, I'm answering the same ones. No, this is, this is great. Um, I, think, I think it's a little bit of the Wild West out in, in LA you know, and all over because you, you, you're forming amalgamations. The director of a movie is no longer possibly just a director. He's also working on some of the, you know, the cinematography, maybe he's an editor, maybe, you know, it's a jack of all trades thing. And I think a lot of the people that had one trade going in and are, were really good at it are finding that they're getting passed up sometimes by the person who can do four or five different things, including being able to be versed at, you know, technology. Yeah. We're seeing a lot of the things happen in the computer industry just to share on my side of the, uh, the, of the table. Data scientist is the hottest job on the planet doing data. Some of the best data science are anthropologists. Really? Right? We're, like weird That's majors in college, but, but they have a unique view of the data. They're not parochial in their thinking. They're looking at it differently. Or they have a math background. Obviously math is pretty important for data science, but also right. it's not just a, pro, a typical, you got to be this spec. It's a little bit of a different artsy kind of feel because you got to be look at things differently. You got to be able to rotate around 360. And that's exactly it. That you've got to be able, you've got to have you got to be thinking outside of the box at all times nowadays, all right. you know? Well, so. Rob, what's next for you? What's going on? You got a lot of things going on. Wow. You got a lot of business ventures. You make a lot of money on your prints. You're famous. Um, uh, you're exploring new territory. What are, the, what are the, some of the boundaries you're pushing right now creatively that's really uh, getting you excited? Um, well, I'm going to be directing a movie coming up, um, which I find great because it allows me to take every bit of the, all the things I know and put it into, in, put it into a package. That's fun. Um, I've got several gallery shows coming up. I've got a gallery show that I'll be doing with Stan, um, which will be New York and LA. And uh, just getting on stage with, yeah. with more and more bands. And yeah. you know, I think 
You're a cult of personality. What's it like working with Stan? He's a cult of personality. Oh my God, Stan is Stan's great. I mean, people yelling Stan. stuff at him. Hey, what do you think about that? I mean, there's a lot of culture in the Marvel Comics world. Oh man, he, you know, and look, he's he's what 95, <laughs> and he's got more energy than I. That, literally last night, we're all out to dinner, and. I left before everybody else did. Stan outlasted me, a 95-year-old guy. I was like, I'm too tired, I gotta go to bed. And Stan's still going, you know. He's, An energizer bunny. He's an animal. Well, great for coming on. Thanks for the inspiration. Great art. Absolutely. What amazing Thank art you right so here. much for having me, man. Great job, congratulations. Good to see the arts. Analog and the digital world is connecting. This is the key to success in the technology business, bringing an artisan mindset. It's a great technology for societal benefits. That's what the theCUBE believes. We believe it, and so does Mr. Pryor here. Check out the art, robertpryor.com. Check it out, robpryor.com. Uh, this is theCUBE, live from San Francisco. More after this short break. Thanks for having me.